Five. Sounds good. Okay. Hello, everybody. Oops, Sounds turned down my phone. <laughs> Welcome to Kids Planning. Allison is obviously not here. This isn't Allison. We have Devin Norris, who writes for Quackalope and just great member of the board game community who happens Appreciate to it. live here in Little Rock near us. So we've been trying to get together to play some games for a while. And he messaged me and said, hey, do you like Rainbow Six? And I said, yes. And he told me he had a copy of Six Siege, which is hitting Kickstarter next week. So I said, why don't we play that? So Allison had a previous engagement tonight. So we are playing Rainbow Six because Allison's not a huge fan. So <laughs> it'll be more fun this way anyway. I imagine that I'm excited enough about it that I'll make up for yes, Allison's she will, absence. <laughs> just for Allison will like this game eventually because every single there is yet to be a game that she has started with like uh, I don't like that that she played it and didn't end up liking. And she'll probably beat me at it because that's <laughs> apparently when we live stream games she beats me at them. So it's all right. My wife beats me at almost every game I play. So so okay. So I'm gonna. Do a couple things over here on the stream, and I'm going to let you just talk us through the game and tell us how this is going to work. And I will switch to the top down so everyone can see this. Okay, so while he's figuring out the technical side, which I don't know anything about and am incompetent at, I will talk to you about what Mythic Games is going to be sharing with us uh, next week on Tuesday is when the Kickstarter launches on the 22nd. And this is but a taste. This is a prototype that they have out, and it's got a large chunk of what will be available. But as you know, with Kickstarter and with Mythic Games, there's going to be a lot that's probably going to be revealed that will make us, you know, ogle and, and drool all over the Kickstarter page once the campaign goes live. If you are not familiar with Rainbow Six Siege, it is a tactical online multiplayer shooter. Uh, first person shooter that is team based, uh, which will be a little bit different here since it's 1v1 and we're each controlling the whole team. In the video game, you are 5v5 and half of you are defenders, half of you are attackers, and the defenders are trying to hold a zone, most frequently a site that has two bombs and that are armed, and the attackers are trying to come in, infiltrate, and either fully neutralize the defending team or disarm the bomb, one of the two bombs that's there. So it's very tactical. There's a lot of terrain destruction with the walls and with the ceilings and the floors. A lot of it can be manipulated horizontally, horizontally and vertically to create a really interesting fighting area that's not just an environment that's flat like other shooters. This board game distillation of it, or inspired by the video game, does try to simulate a lot of that while also creating a really interesting head-to-head -head between probably most frequently it's going to be two players but they do have availability of three to four um, and flies don't look that big normally in the game so there are several things that happen in this game that are going to try to create tension number one is it goes along with an app and you can use that on your PC, on you know mobile devices, but that app is going to institute a timer. And that timer is going to pressure both the defender and the attacker to make decisions quickly and to react to the changing state of the battlefield as rapidly as possible um, while allowing some time to digest what's going on and to create a quick battle plan. So we are going to be on two different sides. I am going to be the defender Typically, if you, again, if you aren't familiar with the video game, a lot of the game is decided or influenced in the very initial stages, which is called deployment. Deployment is where you set up your defensive measures in the uh, environment that you're working in. You might have signal disruptors that block electric electronic devices. You might have bulletproof windows and doors that uh, further deter attackers from coming in and force them to use explosives or some other method. You might have reinforced walls that create harder to destroy areas. All of those are chosen by the team and you can pick different operators. In this prototype, we have a more limited selection of both operators and gadgets, but I imagine once you see the full game, it's going to more accurately reflect the scope of what's happening in the video game, which inspired it. So we are each going to be one side. I will be the defender. I've already done a pre 
made setup. So the deployment is done. We won't be doing that. But when you're playing the game by yourself, you'll be able to uh, decide upon how you want to deploy within the area. But for the sake of time, Daniel yeah. and I just decided on... Yeah, Stephen mentioned that we already did the played the setup round. Yeah, we just used a pre-made... Just what the instruct kind of their first time playing because I've never I've 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 had eyes on this game for about forty five minutes. So. <laughs> but for I think you'll do well for forty five minutes. So Stephen is correct. We've already done the setup round. Uh, that is just to speed up the 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 live stream or the experience for you guys. Yeah. But that is a major part of the game. Uh, it, I don't want to minimize that. How you set it up, both as a defender and attacker, can direct the entire course of the particular round that you play um, if you happen to create a very effective snare or um, scenario that someone has to move through. So the setup round is already done. We're going to be pushing straight into the activation rounds uh, that there are five with a possible overtime round. And Steven, since you're obviously on, can you answer this? Is there a delay in your audio too? Allison mentioned she's got a slight delay in her audio. Um, but we're not sure. I thought we had all that figured out, and she's just on her phone, so it might be that. So if someone watching can let us know if there's an audio delay, that'd be helpful. Don't know if I can fix it, because probably don't need to go try and <laughs> offset that live. But, okay, there is an audio delay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll fix that I can for keep next monologuing time. if you want to figure it out. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, we'll just, we're in a small box over there. It's not going to, it's not going to, um mess anything up, I don't think. Okay, and Steven said it's not the end of the world. Yeah. So, the way that this will operate, like uh, he was talking about the deployment, you can also uh, go through the deployment phase within the app. It will allow you to do that, but we've just pushed through until the point where uh, we're going to start rounds. The other interesting thing that you can do in this game that I thought was worth mentioning, I was talking to Daniel about it before, is if you have two players of different ability or different experience with the game, you can actually set different restrictions or time handicaps upon the more experienced player to give him him or her less time to react. And then they will have to figure out um, how, how to move more quickly in their decision making. So since I have had more time eyes on it than 45 minutes, yeah. I've given myself a little bit of a handicap, not a ton because neither of us have played before, but I've given myself a little bit of a handicap and then uh, Daniel has the regular one. So on this app, I'm just going to go to the deployment phase and I'm going to just immediately push in deployment because we have already set it up, uh, which... Uh, if you're the player, it's going to be an interesting thing. But for the viewer, it might be nicer that you're not watching us finagle that for the next hour. <laughs> so uh, are you ready to play? I'm ready to play. All right. So even though I, as the defender, deploy first and build everything out, Daniel, as the attacker, will always start each round's activation first. No, so, well, before we go, so did you mention the, the multiple instances of your characters oh no so that that is something that is going to be interesting you might notice that the only miniatures on the board are the blue ones those yep. are the attackers so the defenders have two different uh versions of them within the map and what that signifies is daniel as the attacker doesn't know my exact position and so these are one of them is real and one of them is a decoy yeah, so there's castle here and here and on the back of it it will say which is which so he'll be in, you can check anytime you want. I can right? check it anytime I want, which I probably need to do because yeah. it's been about 30 minutes since I okay. set it up. <laughs> so, and if you want to go ahead and check those, I can I can look away if you want to know. I think, it'll be more, I think it'll be more enjoyable for all of us yeah. if I just maybe figure it out as okay. I um, But yeah, so I don't know which of those is real. Once I get within line of sight of one of those tokens, so let's say if this is the fake castle, I get within line of sight of that, does this go away? So once you get into line of sight of that, either with your miniature or with a drone, drone, then as soon as you have line of sight, it will be revealed. And if it's the correct one, then I'll replace it with a miniature. And if it's not, I will move that, remove that one and replace the other one with the miniature. Okay, cool. Um, and can I have the reference Game sheet? Game aid, yes, no the, problem. The reference sheet there. Don't worry, we will be very copiously yes. leafing through both the game aid and this hefty rule book um, in order to make sure that we're attempting to do everything yeah. correctly. We're going to make mistakes, so just bear yes. with us. Okay, so I have, so I can move up, do I flip these back over? 
So I can move one to three. There's going to be two rounds of... Two of, rounds of activation. Of activation, okay. Yeah. In each of the five rounds or more. So are you ready? Yeah. Now, there's a bomb. Is this the bomb? So, so yes, this is, this is the bomb mode. You can do bomb, control, and hostage. Though I set up bomb because I thought it was going to be the most interesting, and as an avid fan of the video game, it's the one that's most played in competitive ranked play. Yeah, we never so, talked before about what that actually <laughs> We didn't means. actually talk about the bomb. So th there are two bombs on the map. One mm -hmm. is here and one is here. Your goal as the attacker is to get to that bomb and then activate it uh, or a actively disarm it because it's armed already. And when you do that, it sets like an end of game phase where whatever round you do that on, at the end of that round and then at the end of the next round, if it's still being disarmed, you win. If I flip it back over to armed, then um, you do not win. I believe I win at that point. Um, I don't think you get to keep playing if you've disarmed it or armed it, disarmed it, and then I took it off. Do I need to disarm both of them to win, or just no? Win? As soon as you start to disarm one of them, the other one gets removed from the board. So it's okay. only one of them. Okay, and that's just an action getting to it, and yes, it's it's like a tactical action in the field. Um, so okay. it's just one of the you know you have a movement as an action, and then two other actions. So. Okay, so movement and two actions, and I can take my movements. I get up to five movement points, and I can take those separate. So I can move, do something, continue moving. Yes. So, yes. Okay. And then, okay. So I will probably should have surveyed the board a little bit. <laughs> so you currently have Blitz, yep. who is a close range uh, pistol shooter with a shield. Since he's holding a shield, he always has light protection, which okay. means it's kind of like he will reduce damage taken to him. Um, he is uh, not a fast mover, but he can get in and deal damage. You have Thermite over here, which is your person who can um, use a exothermic charge to blow through um, red uh, walls. Yep. And then you have... Ash over here, who is your fastest mover, if she ever needs to additionally run, she can do another five. She's really uh, quick, and she's kind of your infiltrate fast and heavy, or, yeah. or fast and quickly. You have IQ, whose ability is able to detect electronics and uh, remove them. She can even th see them through uh, objects. Uh, she's got a little digital display. And then you've got... Um, Sledge, which is one of my personal favorite operators, who his entire thing is a massive breaching hammer that you can use to bust down barricades or bust down uh, soft walls, and you're able to uh, kind of change the terrain of the environment um, by opening up breaches. Okay. Right and then cameras, how do the cameras work? The cameras, um, cameras and Overwatch both are if you ever end an action in a space that it can see, um, uh, which is pretty much like in that room, like line of sight, uh, if you can ever, if you ever end your action or end a action in that space, it locates you, okay. which would help me be able which to shoot you through okay. stuff. Um, yeah, so you're possibly there. Yep. And possibly there. So this is yeah, this is definitely the lighter side of the map for yeah. me. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll just we'll figure this out as we go. Get that fly. I kind of like it aesthetically. Is yeah. like, <laughs> it's very <laughs> it's, it's, it's very it's a drone. Thematic. It's a yeah, drone. It's, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so you've got ten minutes for round one. So between both activations. On all of your operators, you've got 10 minutes. Okay. And this guy is behind a wall, so... He's behind two heavy walls. He's he's in the, he's actually, like, in a cubicle, like a toilet okay. uh, stall. And this right here goes to an overwatch? So, that... yeah, so you could come in through this window, and you'd be on the stairs, and you could come up to that floor, or you could go um, downstairs. Okay. So... And destroying this is one of my actions, destroying that wall there. Yes, so if you, it is it is adjacent to you, uh, you can be diagonally adjacent to it, so that would be one of your actions to use as IQ. You could do a destroy action, which is yellow, which is what these are, so you could destroy that and then move in. Okay. Um, and so just to keep in mind movement, something that we haven't fully covered, if there's ever... 
if you're ever moving through something like that, it's going to cost one extra movement. So to move into here, it would be one two to get into there. Okay. And can you move diagonally? You can move diagonally. Okay. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna. Okay. Do so this. that destroys that, That's IQ, which removes so that, that barricade that. from the game. And then now I no longer have Overwatch. Yep. So. So that's one, two. Yes. Is this camera in? At the end of your action, it will spot you. So you haven't finished your movement action. If you do a shoot action in the middle of the movement action, you still won't have finished your move action. So you could shoot that camera before it spots you if you wanted to shoot it right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll do three... I'll go ahead and shoot that camera. Okay, so you'll shoot, shoot that the camera. camera. Um, really, it's just uh, I think it's kind of destroy um, when it when, when it, it's opposed to a camera. Yeah, you don't, that you don't was have my to question. Is that, is that camera on both sides of the wall? No, so it shows that it's okay. It has a it, it has kind of like where it's yeah, facing. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see this. It has red on one, and then a picture of a camera. Yes. On the other. So side. this camera it was facing this room and yeah. is not able to see into the other space at all. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the standee stuff is can't be laid down <laughs> yeah. for the overhead camera. So, okay. Um, so I'm going to shoot that. Do I have to roll to shoot that? Oh, St Steven was asking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do I roll to shoot that? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Uh, it's just, you, you, you'll just destroy it as an action. So this would be your final action. You've destroyed this wall. You've would, moved it. Would in. that be counted as removing a gadget? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so I need to be next to it to do that. Um, for a camera, I think you can just shoot it. Well, I can get I can get up next to it, so I'll just get next to it and go ahead and destroy it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's totally fine, and then I can just figure it out as we're going. Okay. And so that would be IQ has finished their activation, and then your uh, and because the camera's gone now, then you aren't spotted. So okay. you, you made a stealthy entry to this space. Yeah. So, yeah, Stephen, don't know if you heard that. It, it was sitting on the wall, but it's a two-sided standee that shows the red is not the camera facing, and then it has the, the actual camera on this side. So it was specifically facing into the stairwell. Um, so I'll just put that back there. So I can activate one to three of my people. Um... Yeah, so it just says if it is in a space in line of sight. So it's in line of sight even if you were back here, you just shoot it. Okay. Um, so that's one. So that's one activation. You can do one or two more. Okay. So I can go over and do one, two... And then this would be the line of sight question that we were having. It's from the center to the center. Yes, so that camera would not have line of sight on you even if you destroyed the window. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and destroy that window. What is this little thing? There? That is barbed wire. So barbed wire is an um, environmental setup tool that uh, defenders get. And if you move into it, uh, I believe it stops your activation fully. So it's kind of like you get tangled up in Can it. Can I destroy it? Um, yes. If you had actually you, which you could do this, you know, reverse or whatever. If you do a breach charge, um, I believe that your breach charge would destroy also the adjacent gadget. And so that would destroy the barbed wire as well. Okay. Can I use just a, if I don't want to move in there because of that camera right now, can I... Just you could throw a frag in, and that would. But destroy I can't it as well. just destroy that being adjacent to it. Um, no, I don't believe so. Uh, okay. Let me go to. So it's got oh, it's got a yellow. Um, can to remove uh, a gadget, light wall, or barricade. Um, yes, yeah, so I think you could use a second destroy action to get rid of it, and okay. then he would be done. Okay, so I'll do that. And then I'm just going to hang out right there because I'm not in line of sight of anything. And that's also a movement. You could theoretically move, could in, move in, but in, the but camera would right. see you. And what is this right here? That is a bulletproof camera, which operates similarly to this top camera here, but you cannot shoot it from a distance. You would have to physically go up Get to the wall 
uh, to be able to destroy it. So it can see that room. Okay. Um. So that would be thermite done, unless yeah. you want to move in, which I no, didn't think you I, did. I don't want to. All right, uh, and now you can either stop or you can activate one more operator. I'll go ahead and stop and see what you do. Okay, so he... I just switched his time. He used a little over six minutes of the ten minutes, and now it's my time, and I have even less. I just have seven and a half minutes to do my Just remaining. confirming, can we use the same action twice in an activation? Yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah, see anything you, that said you, you, could, you could run in or do your movement, and then you could shoot in an operator, and if they're not dead, you could shoot them again. Um, but So, yes, you can do the same, op uh, the same uh, action twice in an activation. Um, the, the only thing that would be limited would be kind of more special actions that your operators use. Say if you only have one of the activations le or actions left, if you use it and exhaust it, you can't do it anymore because it's limited. Um, but shoot and move and destroy uh, gadget, those base actions you can do more than once. Okay, so it's your... So it's my move. I need to figure stuff out. Um... Um, let me see real quick. I'm just going to look in the rules real quick to see something. Uh, so I'm currently looking up about revealing an operator because I have hidden operators. Um, this is, I, I'd guess this is the kind of game that just gets better and better and better the more the people playing it understand it. Understand it, it yeah. yeah. And then also once you... Like, Much like playing a video game. <laughs> and, and once you get more operators and more gadgets, your options you know, multiply. And that deployment stage at the beginning that we skipped for you know, your yeah. sake um, gets even more nuanced and interesting because you're trying to figure out what do I bring to the table, what operators do I want to choose, um, and how will I you know, lay them out or strategize and try to have them you know, synchronize together in terms of what they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I think I'm actually, in order to do what I want to do, I think I'm going to reveal one of my operators. And so I can reveal my hidden operators at any time if I want to, and I'm going to reveal this pulse that is not actually there. And the reason why I want to do that, I'm going to put this Pulse, who is a really cool guy who has a cardiac uh, pulse register device. It's like a heartbeat detector. And so he can see stuff um, through floors, through walls, through obstacles. He's a really useful operator. But the reason why I want to um, show him is because I want to clear up this space. And now that I know that this operator's here, I'm going to try and move in. So my first action is going to be activating bandit and I'm going to move bandit one, two, three to this space right here. And that's going to be me moving that open. Um, and because Jared had to, um, Daniel, Daniel, Jared's your son. Sorry. Yeah, I was playing Rubik's cubes with the son earlier. He's the more popular <laughs> one of the channel. So it's okay. So because Jared, <laughs> Because Daniel had to destroy the barricade on the window, move in, and destroy the camera to not be detected, he was not able to establish Overwatch, which means his um, character is vulnerable. So I'm going to move here with Bandit, and then I'm going to destroy this barricade, which whenever I destroy a barricade, that is not something that a decoy or a hidden operator can do. So as soon as I do that action, I have to reveal that this is actually Bandit. And so I will put this up, and where other, wherever the other bandit is, right here, hiding in the toilet, that bandit is not actually there. 
And so now I will also reveal this operator who is now standing right here and has line of sight. Uh, you, I don't, yeah, I don't, don't even need, need to, to I don't need to check it. He has now, line of sight. Now something that we did talk about before is line of sight is from center to center. So on this one, it wouldn't have line of sight because, because it crosses the wall is over in the, the way. The wall. So it's not from anywhere on the square to anywhere else on the square. Which is pretty important because yeah. I think a lot of games that do line of sight actually have it to where if you're diagonal, you can't attack there. But because they do center to center, it touches the, the wall. So you can't do direct diagonals if there's something on the corner of that space. Which is why I put bandit here. So I have moved, I have destroyed a barricade, and now I'm going to shoot. And Bandit, at close range, gets two yellow and two red. So it is possible, it's possible that I will just kill um, IQ outright. Which would be really mean. <laughs> so that does five points of damage, which is all of IQ's health. So you would normally distribute these if you don't fully kill them. You'd put these wound tokens on. But because it fully killed, and there's no protection for IQ here. She's not behind um, cover. It's just a direct shot. Um, and so I don't think that this protects you. No. Yeah. I, there's nothing line of sight. And so IQ is dead and off the board. And I have unfortunately also used three full actions so this particular character cannot go into overwatch mode to protect him in case sledge decides to come through the window but it wiped out his character that can detect electronic devices easily through surfaces so that kind of helps um oh i should have been playing this whoops well, um, I, it was. Uh, I just Some paused it when i was looking at the rules yeah. but i forgot to redo it um so that was so my my major failure in the video games too was using all the technology. Like I w I was real bad about like actually using the gadgets and stuff. So I probably wasn't going to use the detect electronic stuff <laughs> through walls anyway. So not a huge loss, but <laughs> so um, other than it's one fifth of my, well, my team. one fifth of your team. Yeah. So I will activate. Um, So I actually am going to move this smoke. Wait, who's better at distance, smoke or um, mute? They're both the same at distance. So I'm going to actually take smoke here and move this character uh, one, which removes Overwatch, two, three, four. I'm actually going to bring him here. And I'm going to use something that we haven't really discussed yet. No, we yet. don't know if that's the real smoke. We don't know if that's the real you, smoke. You theoretically know. I theoretically know, if it is. Right. And so I'm going to bring him into this corner because one major part of the video game that not a lot of shooters do is you have the ability to lean, and that allows you to keep yourself mostly protected behind cover while also being a threat still uh, offensively. And so I'm going to bring smoke here and I am going to lean him into this, uh, like around the wall here, so that he's protected but has a view. Um, now, technically in the game, you're supposed to put, put the leaning token wherever the character actually is and then have the miniature here, likely because of their Overwatch token that's associated with the miniature. But um, if you see uh, Jesse and Alex's Board Game Co. and Quackalope, gameplay video they have the miniature here and the leaning it, it here, makes more sense that way which makes more sense to me as well so daniel and i also agreed upon that point so smoke is behind this wall and he is leaning out facing and i'm going to have his third activation so he, he moved oh he has another one as well so uh he's gonna move so leaning is not a that's not a oh yeah it's part of movement so okay. one two three, four, and then the fifth movement right. is the lean. What, are the, what were the... Uh, one, two, So moving three, around the corner is... Four. Moving diagonal is... Moving diagonal, as far as I can tell, is is valid. Okay. Um, and I can check that later. But e even, if, even if I'm not... I can't do that, I would have just moved, used my second action as a run, 
to yeah. get there and then do Overwatch. Okay. Um, so, because I don't think... In the, in the video game, you can re-erect barricades to block off locations, but I don't think you can do that here necessarily. So I'm going to get Overwatch here just to where if Sledge does come and takes a pot shot at Bandit, I might have a chance of damaging that person with smoke. So those are my two that I'm going to activate, and I'm going to switch over to Daniel, who is now... I'm going to pause while he is... Now Alex is here. His audio is off. He said he's just here to troll you. So, <laughs> told him that's fine with me. So, Alex, uh, you shouldn't troll me. I, Daniel and I are maintaining the the proper leaning. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're starting this this online campaign. The online campaign of leaning with uh, the token rather than the miniature. All right, so I'm going to start your time again. If we run out, and it's just the first time. It's fine. Yeah, and just to. Should we swap? So this is... Yeah, so we, if, we if you want to swap everybody, yeah, we, we, can, swap we can do that. that real quick. And I can um, still shoot your your leaning person? You can still shoot him, but they your, will the, have the, the heavy cover that will take home. away three hits of whatever you roll. Okay. Oh, he's watching Loki. So that's more important. Uh, which is why his audio is off. <laughs> Let's see. I'll be watching Loki later. Yes. <laughs> um, when you said low key at first, I thought like low. Yeah, key. He's, he's low key watching. <laughs> it's like I'm not sure exactly what that means. Does this bear stop me from line of sight? It does Does not stop line of sight. It gives you cover if you're adjacent to it, and it makes it harder for me to shoot if I'm shooting at you. You can also physically mantle over it, but it doesn't stop you from uh, seeing me. If you have line of sight. From that point, I don't know if you would. Um, I think think you do line of sight to this, which might be dicey, but... uh, you're always welcome to go for it. That's Blitz. that's Blitz, who is your more get in there close range. He's also got an obnoxious ability in the video game where he can get close to you and blind you. In this, it a- operates a stun ability, which means you can only roll yellow dice to attack. Um, but he he's a frustrating attacker. I don't know how it will pan out in the board game, but so I'm gonna. I hate this, him in the video. This game. may be a terrible strategy. But I'm going to breach here. So that's going to be one. One action. Can. Can, yeah, so you were able to breach through that window. Okay. And that guy's gone. Then Overwatch is gone. So then I have one, two, three. And Kyle, thank you for watching. I'm glad that you're enjoying this. Uh, I'm excited about it too, uh, since it's okay. one of my favorite video games. So now I have... Up you, close, so now... So, he, here's the issue. Um, well, well, I don't know if it's necessarily an issue. Um, I will also be able to do a riposte. Like, I'll be able to shoot you back because I have Overwatch. Even know? if I kill you with my first shot? I mean, if you kill me with your first shot, that's going to be Can really... Can you return fire? Uh, so, even if you're here, I will... Because of the diagonal, like, you, you need to be, like, here or here. What if I... So, if I, instead of going there, I come here? Uh... If you come all, uh, can if we you, can do diagonals, then that's one, one two, two, three, three four, five. five. Um, I would no longer have cover, and um, you would, yeah, you would shoot me fully, I believe. Okay. Well, you came and shot me there, so I'm gonna <laughs> shoot you there. Okay. So that. All right. Let's see it. Well, so you so immediately got line of sight. Let's yeah. see if Castle's there. Castle does happen to okay. be there. Okay. So you have unmasked one of my one of, one of my people who I don't. Think he's still leaning? Um, I mean, he's gonna have line of sight. I mean, he's on you leaning you, towards me now. Uh, yes, he, he's he's leaning he, into he your. Lean, he's he leaning he into lean your into gun. My shots. Yeah. Okay. So now, so because I am one, two, I'm two spaces away. Two spaces away, and you'll be able to use. So one I of use each. one of each. So you do. And I am adjacent to this cover here, though, so that will take away. To Will it, even though it's not in the way? No, it, you're right. It's it's not line of sight in the way. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. So, yeah, so I'm trying as, as best to hope this guy I stays was alive. right there. <laughs> so you have at the top of each player's their range one to three, four to six, and seven plus, and that determines how I guess how accurate your shots are. So you have the red dice are really strong, orange or medium, yellow or weak. So with this, because I'm within three squares, I roll one of each. Yes. 
And to answer your question, Edward, this is a Kickstarter game from Mythic Games that is coming next week on the 22nd. So on the 22nd, you'll be able to see it go live. And I promise you, knowing Mythic and Kickstarter, this is going to have a massive amount of operators and content that's going to be revealed. This is just the prototype. Okay, so that sucked. <laughs> wow, that is brutal. You did two damage um, to Castle, who has a health of five. Um, but you are now directly in front of me. <laughs> and you do better than me. <laughs> However, to, if, it, if it does make you feel better, uh, he, does, um, have, uh, he does have a shield, which means every damage I do will be reduced by two because he naturally has a shield. Okay. So, he, 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 so he I'm will probably be able to, not going to die. If I have a really good roll, you will still die. Okay. <laughs> but I have five... All right, we'll just let's just. You, so you have five health, um, but everything I roll will be reduced by two hits. So if I roll five hits, it won't kill you. It'll only do three because your shield takes away two. Okay, hits. the the cumulative total is reduced. The cumulative two. total is reduced. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you're are you going to return fire? Or I just... cannot activate right now. Oh wait, no, no, I can riposte, you're, can't I? Yeah, you um, had because you, I have I have line of overwatch. sight there, Overwatch that yeah. that that guards you there. So I will actually shoot back. Um, Kyle so, asked if we know how long after the announcement on the 22nd it will take to get the game if I back immediately you need to go watch Jesse's video and Alex's video on shipping and freight <laughs> because 10 days 10, 10 days, days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Edward 10 it, will, days it from, will take a long yeah, time it's, there's, or, no Kyle it will take a long yeah, time yeah, um, shipping is all wonky right now ship and there's there's so many supply chain issues going on and jesse and alex both did a on board game co and quack Look, both did a great job of breaking those down yeah um, and also i mean and, and the kickstarter generally it, takes a year anyway yeah to, K kickstarters you know, will take generally at least a year but mythic games is going to suffer from what any Kickstarter that is a big box campaign is, it's more shipping containers that these bigger boxes are going to have to fill, which means right. the shipping issue that's happening is going to more adversely affect these companies that have a larger box Kickstarters yeah. than someone that has smaller boxes that could fit. But again, as he said, yeah. there's a couple videos that Jesse and Alex have both done, and a bunch of publishers have talked about on Facebook yeah. and social media that kind of address that issue. And hopefully a year from now that will have calmed down a little yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully it might get worse. But. All of that uh, is just delaying the fact that I'm about to shoot your, your guy. Right, you're going to miss, though. <laughs> Can you miss with red dice? Um, I th No. Okay. I'll do at least two damage. Okay, I can't believe from that that I... <laughs> so that does five okay. damage. So I'm down to three. So you're down... So you've got three of these okay. uh, health... Uh, wounds, and if you t suffer two more, you will lose. You destroyed a barricade, moved in, and then shot. So that particular character's activation is done, and you have two more activations to go. Okay. And I will say that I feel, the I start of this, the start of this game, Daniel and I seem to just be like having a bar brawl yeah. um, with guns. But y you can you can be a lot more. Uh, well, uh, I thought you know I, hesitant and uh, I thought I could run in and just shoot you in the head. And I was two spaces away with the guy that theoretically specializes in close combat. Yes. So, and none of my other guys. So, can, what would be like if we're retconning or or looking back with hindsight? Something that Blitz specializes in is getting close, but also getting close and managing the fight hit on his own. So his ability with his flash shield. It wasn't possible for uh, Daniel to be able to destroy, move, and then do two actions. But if he had two actions once he got close to Castle, he could have expended one of his flash shield charges, which stuns my character and means that if they ever attack, they'll only use yellow dice. And then he could have shot if he had enough actions to do so. So sometimes moving in a little bit more methodically or plotting can enable you to get the right amount of actions, but uh, we've both just been yeah, kind of uh, having a Western shootout in the middle of this the, building. It's been the Leroy Jenkins <laughs> methodology. So you've got two more people's activations. Yeah, and I still don't know if that smoke is real. You do not know. That could be a feint. That could be a tactical feint. So can I fly a drone 
around that. Uh, so that that's actually something that Alex and Jesse both said the whole time, and I think it's just the everybody's normal concept of drones. They're actually little wheeled robotic drones so they're not flying at all they're just like zooming along the ground um they said fly multiple times in their video which as someone who just plays a video game was amusing to think of but uh yes you can pop a drone in if you want and to that would go five five spaces um yes it can go up to five spaces so if you wanted to move and get closer to where your drone could go further you know that's also totally possible okay i'll do that i'll move one and remember, your movement can be interrupted, yeah. so you can keep doing more. So that's one. Are we are we moving diagonally? Do you want to look up while I do this and see? Oh, so your drone is this like that. Oh yeah. So you you, you moved yeah yeah I, I just say we're gonna move diagonally because I'm pretty sure it's possible. Um, enter spaces with barbed wire. Um, all hidden operator tokens are. Oh, it scans the whole room. So this is not, that's technically another room. So you would need to get it in there. And if we can move diagonal, then I can move one, two, three, four, four five, five, and get in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so at the end, is it the end of the activation that it, uh, where's the drone? I just looked at the drone. On ending its movement, it scans the whole room. So you have just scanned this smoke. Which happens to be real. Okay. And so smoke is now Huzzah. right here, visible um, on the map. And now that you've scanned the room, you have located both of these uh, chaps. Uh, Bandit with his car battery and smoke with his noxious gas. Okay. Um. Not IBS. It's like chemical gas. And who are we? That's Sledge. So, so that's Sledge. Uh, Ash is here and Thermite's over there. Okay. Um, and now as you move those, I'll be able to see you move. Until, y you'll be able to know where those characters are until the end of the round. But I can't shoot you through the wall. Once those markers go away, I, the player, still know. But I can't shoot you through a wall. Through a wall, because you don't know my exact you positioning right. until you okay. locate me again. Yeah. Okay. Um, those two people have both moved, so they can't. Let's see. It's been hours over this content. We're happy to be yeah. here for you, Kyle. <laughs> I'm really excited to play this. So, um, okay. So these two guys have activated this round. Um, Smoke and Bandit have both. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay. Bandit has activated. Smoke. Smoke has activated, and that's it. So will I always activate first? In, so yeah, you will always activate first. Okay. It's kind of the uh, mechanical translation of the pressure is on attack to do something with the bombs. Okay. So I'm giving it away. If I come in and shoot one and shoot Bandit, does not have Overwatch. Smoke does. So if I come if in and you shoot, shoot Bandit, Bandit um, you, I, you won't have an opportunity to return fire. I will. It's it's as soon as an operator ends an action within sight of the Overwatch, they get to um, shoot, I believe. I believe. That may not be right. But I'm pretty sure. Let me look through while you decide how you want to kill me. Okay, what it has Sledge? Let's see, Sledge. Yes, what? I will be able to riposte even if you don't shoot at smoke. Okay, what if I do this? What if I... Step over here, so that's two movement actions. Shoot bandit, and then step back here. You could do that. But, uh, yes, you could do that. Well, actually, after your shoot, I will be able to shoot back. Because the shoot is an action. What if I lean? If you lean, um, I would still be able to shoot, but you would have that cover. And he would not have cover. So that would probably be the best method. Um, okay, and you could lean with one movement... And that would move your character there. Um, okay. This is gone. But as far as, as I understand, as far as them actually coming and engaging me, because both of those characters have gone already, they won't have the opportunity to engage me. And also because you haven't used all of your movement, you will lean 
shoot. Smoke will be able to riposte, shoot back. No, I'm and not then, line of sight to smoke. Or I guess I am because you of the You am because lean. of the lean. Okay. But here's the thing. I will get to shoot at you. It will be reduced because you're behind that wall. And then because you still have movement, you could unlean at the end of it. And then, you, and then I wouldn't be able to shoot at you. Okay. But you are not... Those two guys don't have another turn before until the next I round. go. Yeah, yeah. Until the next round. Yes, until the next round. In so which case, I will be able. You to can go move again. him first okay. and get him out of there. Okay. Yes, which is part of the advantage of the attackers always going first. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to. So you have activated your drone, and then your second major action is after you lean, you're going to so shoot I'm at lean. Bandit, I'm going to shoot at bandit, which you have line of sight, one, obviously. Two. Three, three four. four. So you're four away with two sledge. Yellow, two yellow and two orange. And he doesn't have any cover. So, come on, be better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. Golly. Okay, um, yeah, you killed Bandit in a brutal... Um, Serves him right. Brutal shot. But now Smoke is going to fire back at Sledge. Yes. So now I will fire back at Sledge, and I get at... One, two, three, four. Um, I get, but you're behind cover, so I won't get to use one of those oranges. I will just get one orange and two red. This is kind of Smoke's range, so it's going to make him dangerous. And but whatever is, I do, you're reducing it by three Yeah, hits. that is this, the little light. You probably can't see it really well, but the little lightning bolt. Ooh. Yeah, so that little lightning, little lightning bolt that's bolt. a black dot indicates that if there's any cover or anything, then... So it says if he's understanding the rules right, Smoke would actually get to shoot before he gets to shoot and again after he's shot. So movement in its entirety counts as an action, but then each other action that you do, even spliced within movement, counts as an action. So technically, Sledge's movement action is not complete. Even though he leaned, he could still f he still has movement points to complete after that. So it's kind of like he's moving out, and then because he's shooting, he can get shot, and then he leans back again. So from my understanding of the rules, because you can interrupt the movement action, yeah, it's the it, entirety of the action. It wouldn't make sense logically to me to... Punish. To, to not have the element of surprise in leaning out and firing first and then smoke reacting to yeah. me. That would seem... A little lopsided. I, I think it would make Overwatch too strong. Yeah. And it would also um, give a lot of uh, additional advantage to the defenders who have better lean points and in and, and spatial setup. Because yeah. um, either way in the game, I'm going to lean and shoot all at once. He's going to hear me shoot or see me shoot and react to that and shoot, but he's not going to get off two shots before I... Or two rounds of shooting. So the, the the way that it reads, if you got if you want me to read from it real quick, it says during the opposing squad's activation phase, whenever an opposing operator has completed an action, is situated within the 180 degrees line of sight, um, then the overwatching operator may ripost. So. So if I if because this, is, this movement isn't fully done yeah. as an action, the only action that has completed was Sledge's shooting of Bandit, which means that Smoke only gets the ripost opportunity after the complete full shoot action that Sledge did, because the movement action isn't done; it's just been interrupted. Okay, yeah, is that, that, is that how you also? That, that's it? how I would see that. Like you said, because the movement action is so. If I had come. Five. Yeah, if you had shoot. been over here and came a full five, I would have shot. And then if you had shot, I would have shot yeah. again. But because your action, movement action isn't finished, that's how I interpret it. Yeah. So I'm going to ripost back at Sledge, who's leaning. And it does five, but three of those are blocked by the heavy wall that he's in front of. So it only does two wounds to Sledge. Okay. So I do. Okay, two. And then... Um, you now have Ash to activate. So you said from watching the dev guide, they had a character lean and get shot, and then after the leaner shot, the defender got to shoot again. Maybe that was... You know, the way the rules read, it's because the movement action can go. So maybe that lean was his fifth move, and the 
the he completed his move action and didn't have another action to move back out of the way. Yeah, That's it's it's entirely possible that the way you guys interpret it is right, um, just based off of the gameplay that I've watched of board game and Quackalope, board game code and Quackalope, and then also the way that I've read the rules. It doesn't seem to be that way, um, but. Uh, again, with a prototype, with with the yeah. uh, incomplete rules, um, it's it's possible. I, I'm going to go on the side of leniency for that, just because I think that it would. I, I think it'd be a little too brutal yeah. to have that happen. It, yeah. So okay, so I'm going to lean back. So out you of lean the way. back, and that's your full. That's movement. my full movement there, and now I have Ash. We're just ignoring the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, we're doing a lot of talking right. and monologuing that yeah. uh, you know. I'm so, totally fine with. This is really just here because I think it's super interesting yeah. in that what it can create with people who know the oh, yeah. rules are playing yeah, it. Yeah, I can definitely see the benefit of that in a... Especially if you have people yourself or other people that you play with that generally take a lot of time. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, we'll just... We'll keep going this way. Again, I would just... from From theme would be... It would take away my complete tactical advantage to lean in in order to shoot and be engaged before I did anything. That, as much as this seems to keep with the theme of that, that seems like yeah. a, it's it's possible that they're right. I mean, yeah. the the gameplay of Siege is a brutal one. I mean, you have people pixel peeking and hiding yeah. out from corners, and they do you know get first shot. So it's entirely possible. But um, all right, yeah, okay. So Ash. Let's see. We have pulse, possibly. Wait, no. Oh, wait, no. no you, you know for sure that that's pulse because I had to. Okay. I had to show off my. Other now, person. what does that do? That's he's that overwatch. means that if you happen to come through this door or this window or this door, if you pass through this space at all, I will get kind of like an instant shot on you because I have a you know spatial or like battlefield you know advantage on you in terms of knowing what's coming there. And what is that? That guy over there. This? Yeah. This is on the interior wall. This is a signal disruptor. It is the special ability of mute. And what that means is uh, in a room containing that, electronic gadgets cannot be used. So if this had been in here, um, then your drone would have been disabled. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, it just happened. You happened to move through the space where it wasn't. Yeah. Uh I'm just gonna. I'm he says there's an extra decoy that needed to be removed. You're right. Thank you so much. Castle needs to be removed. Appreciate it. I think that should be it now. It's just mute yeah. and. Uh, I'm just I'm antsy, so I'm just gonna one, two, three, four, five. And then she then can she run. She can again. run. So one, two, three, four, five. Can she run twice? Uh, no, I gonna, think you can only run yeah. an, one I'm additional gonna, time. I'm going to stop possibly. here, re-enter Overwatch. Or, I guess there's no one. Nah, no. I'll stay there. And this is a, what is this? I need to breach that. Uh, yes, so that is a reinforced, that's Castle's special ability. It's an mm -hmm. armor-proof panel that goes over the window. So if you want to bust that, you would have, have to do to a use destroy a action. Okay. But, um, but because the door is there and now that uh, hidden decoy of Bandit is gone, you do know that this room is open. Uh, you could destroy it, but this is possibly someone yeah. that could come in. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it safe and stop there because you wouldn't breach that outward. Theoretically. Theoretically, I wouldn't. Um, I mean, in the video game, people sometimes repel on the buildings and people bust out to go kill them quickly. But I probably would not. Okay. Okay, that's my... I think I'm going to... What are these? Those are breach charges. They, those allow you to do destruction from a distance. It's essentially a particular like penetrating grenade shell okay. um, that you can do at a distance. Uh, so, okay, so he's... Activated everybody. I have some time remaining. I'm going to try and activate all of my people. I'm going to immediately try to use Castle to try to deal with the person that's in front of me. So I'm going to shoot, and he was not able to establish Overwatch um, on Bant on Blitz because he used all of his actions. So I'm I'm just shooting at him, and he's not going to be able to ripost back. So I'm going to shoot at close range. Is two orange and two red. So as long as I can get. He's got a shield, so as long as I can do four damage total, uh, it will kill him. 
and I got six damage. So that fully kills um, or Blitz, who is now deceased. And that is just one action. And then uh, now this side of the board is pretty safe. I've got three operators over here. I like how on the back of these they have the kind of <coughs> the, the faded edges as the way that you die in the video games. Just yeah, the, the black, the on the edge black of the coming in on you. No. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm excited specifically because of other operators that will come. <coughs> I imagine one of the things that will be revealed is one of the operators that is a GIGN operator is called Doc. And when somebody gets downed in the game but not fully killed, he can use a stem pistol to revive them. So I wonder if this may be a mechanic where if somebody dies, um, they could be revived for maybe two wounds yeah. worth of health or whatever. So, all right, I've activated one action on Castle. Um, let's see. <coughs> His armor panels. I know why you have the T now. Yeah. Oh, that's delightful. It gets... You realize how much talk <laughs> projecting... How much talking you do. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Um, I am going to move Castle. His main ability is during setup, he gets those armor panels up, so he doesn't really have anything special other than shooting people. So I'm going to try and get him into a range in which he could shoot people. I don't necessarily have as many people on this side of the map, so I'm going to move Castle... One, two, three, four, um, I think five. I'm going to move him into this corner, and then I'm going to set up Overwatch facing this way so that I can maybe protect that exterior panel depending on where Thermite decides to go in. And then I'm also going to activate... Um, smoke is already activated. Bandit's dead, and Mute is available... Um, I've got a mute there and a mute there, and then I've got pulse. So I'm actually going to bring, uh, ooh, I think I'm going to actually move pulse. And so the entryway overwatch, I think will just get removed as soon as I move. Um, Okay, all right, so when an Overwatch Pulse is on the second floor or on, on a different floor, he's got that cardiac sensor, that heartbeat detector, and so he's currently got Overwatch on this zone, so what I'm going to actually do is just have him move, and I don't have to do anything to remove that. As soon as I activate that operator, this gets removed, so I'm just going to remove his Overwatch, and then I'm going to have him physically move into that space. I'm going to have him move one, two, three four, five, and I'm going to give, uh, hmm, he's got two more abilities, and just for the sake of it, for the flavor of it, it's not going to do anything for me this turn, I don't believe, um, well, m maybe it will. Uh, I'm going to use my cardiac sensor to place a located mark on an operator up to four spaces away, ignoring walls and barricades. So I can actually know where Ash is by using my heartbeat detector. So I can, my operators now know that she is through that panel. Now that panel won't do anything for me. Um, this panel at least, uh, but the location might allow me to, I've moved, I've used that sensor. Um, I think I can shoot you through the walls. Now does that, the, the fact that you're shooting through a heavy barricaded wall and- so, so this is a soft one. The heavy ones are the ones with two lines. So this is a soft wall and a heavy wall. Even though it has an orange or an orange thing? The, the only on question I have is if you can shoot through exterior walls. 
So I don't think you can. <laughs> For a moment, I was like, "Oh, I was like, how did you read that?" I'm just looking through all the pictures over here. I don't think there's any. Yeah, this is all set up stuff. Uh, they provide heavy protection. Yeah, so heavy protection when shooting is just the absolute maximum. Um, but do they stack up? Like if you. Sh- so I, I believe it mentions like. So a uh, light wall would be. A, a light wall uh, gives light protection, and then that gives heavy protection. I'm not entirely sure if they snack. I think the maximum that it says it can block is three, but... Do I, I read through that while you think what you want to do? Because that would make sense. If you're shooting through two walls, it would... Well, where'd the one with the walls go? So that's right here. Right. If you want to read through that, I'm going to try and look for combat real quick. Um, or shooting. Walls of all types are impassable to operator movements, with a few exceptions. Okay, doesn't say here. Here it is. Do, do, do. Um, operators can have multiple forms of protection, but the result of a shot can never be reduced by more than three hits. Okay. So you're going to shoot there, and it's going to reduce by three. Yes, I'm going to shoot through that light wall and this one only because I know where you are via the heartbeat sensor. Okay. Can I shoot back? Um, no, because you are Overwatch this way. And so it's 180 degrees, and oh, I'm that behind matters? you. Yes. Oh, well, sorry. Well, I would have done, 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 done it that Overwatch direction. into the building, not. Um, not off the into issue the is, woods. is because I don't have a marker. I don't think you have line of sight to me. I'm shooting through surfaces. I, I can't mean, return fire. I don't think you can return fire because right. you don't theoretically know where I am. So I'll can I set up uh, for operators that have deployable gadgets like castle or mute? Can you deploy all their gadgets during the defense? So defense? Kyle, there isn't actually an option. You you do do it during setup. Um, it actually says on their characters whether it's an action or setup. So castles and mutes, those are disruptive or you know delaying gadgets that need to be in place before the game starts. So the part that we skipped for the viewers was the deployment phase where the defender sets up all their people, the hidden ones and the real ones, and they set up all of their gadgets and then the attackers afterwards set up their people around the perimeter. During that deployment phase is when Castle would set up his armored panels and whenever Mute would set up his signal disruptors and whenever Bandit would set up up his shock wires or car batteries, whatever you want to call them. So those set up... um, tactical gadgets are done at the beginning of the game. Um, So I'm going to shoot and at one, two, um, I'm only, I'm just going to do two orange and a yellow. So I may not even hurt you at all. This is Pulse. This is Pulse who's shooting. He gets at range one through three, he gets two orange and a yellow. So given the fact that these are an average of one and these are an average of one and a half, I likely won't hurt you. But I could get lucky. Just so you got five. So I got five. And three. And so three. Two. So he takes two. So at her, as she takes two. Ash takes two. Okay. Um, all right. Is there any way to heal? Doc would allow you to do that. Right. But in the current operator makeup that this prototype okay. has, no. Okay. Okay. So then he is fully activated. Um, he moved, cardiac censored, and then shot. And then the last person I have is mute. And I am going to um, move this mute here. Oh, wait, should I move that one? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to move this one, actually. One. Oh, wait, I can't. Uh, do I want to destroy Because it's going to force me to reveal. Um, I'm going to move this one. And I'm going to move one, two, or just two, three, four, five. I'm going to move behind here and set up Overwatch. Um, actually, 
No, I'm going to also run to where I can get into this corner because I don't like being behind that armor panel. Um, so I'm going to move there and set up Overwatch facing that way, and that is no longer leaning. And then that particular uh, mute, whether real or not, is done. And so that activates. So then we go to end of round, and then it's going to be a little harder for you guys to see, but you say how many people have died because that will affect the amount of time that you're given within um, the next rounds. So I lost one of my um, operators, so I removed that. Wait, what, what's mute? Oh, mute's still not on the... Mute is still unrevealed. So Daniel lost two, which reduces both of our times, and then um, it's not the end of the game because he hasn't... No one has killed all, all the operators, and then also... Um, nobody has tried to arm or disarm the active bomb, so we will go to next turn. So I'm just going to push us to two, and then hold next turn, and then start round two, and then now it immediately goes to uh, Daniel. Okay. Um, so. Yes, so um, Steven, you're correct that a defense is only at the start, but Kyle, I also agree with you. Um, in the game, in the video game, uh, you know, Castle could tear down one of his barricades and it gives him access to put up another one. And then you could tear down these barricaded doors and then put up other ones. It's possible that in the full game and the revised rules that they'll uh, do something to uh, figure that out. But I would have liked to rebarricade some doors if I had the opportunity to. So I agree with you that it would be cool to be able to possibly re-fortify as an option. Um, I'm not sure if there was a kind of stage in development that they realized that would create problems, but yes, I, I agree with you. So there is a possible mute right there. Where's the other possible mute? The other possible mute mo moved over here to get away from the armor panel and then did overwatch facing this way. Actually, I think he's going to do it facing this way. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um... Uh. And how do the grenades and stuff work? Uh, so throwable. Um, oh, I could have been using that. I forgot about that. I've got nitro cell and impact grenades. So you've got uh, grenades and smoke grenades. Those have a range of up to five, and then act it like have a adjacency rule. Your smoke grenades would create smoke clouds, which block line of sight, and then your grenades would do radius damage on wherever you throw it. Okay. So, who is that? That's Pulse right there. Let's see yes. what it is. So if I do, what is a does a breach charge do any damage? In a, does it have a radius of damage? Um, yes, I think you would damage adjacent stuff. So if you did a breach charge, it would destroy this, and I believe it would also destroy the. Um, barbed wire that's underneath there. Yeah, that's barbed wire. So, I mean, I can also go to the do, 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 breach charge. Thankfully, Chris, there's no uh, there's no hostages for me to accidentally kill in this, <laughs> in this setup. There, there is, there is actually... So, uh, Chris, to give you a little anecdote, there is a... The main game, or the video game, is most commonly bomb mode, which is why I set this up as bomb because you can do control and hostage but sometimes if you're not if you play a lot of ranked competitive play online like I typically do sometimes you'll go into just a casual quick match and it's not actually bomb it's one of the other modes it's either secure or it's hostage so there are times where I have gone into a room just in my brain assuming that it was bomb as the mode that we were playing and I would throw a grenade in, and it would, you know, immediately grievously injure or kill the hostage. And I wasn't thinking about it because I wasn't paying attention to what mode we were playing. So, don't kill the hostage is a valid thing to remember. Yeah. yeah so I can't. If I go in here, I can't shoot through that wall because I don't know that he's there. Correct. Uh, y yes, you do not currently know. And, and so, also end of round stuff. Yeah. I forgot to do this refresh phase at the end of the round. 
uh, these markers go away. So it kind of allows your operators to reset, rehide, and uh, reposition without being uh, negated or affected by previous stuff that happened. Okay. So yeah, I have technically, yeah, this is the timer if we were actually playing, honoring the timer. I will definitely play Rainbow Six Siege with you, Chris, if you want to. Please. I, I love the game. I'll definitely play with you. Um, oh, so yeah. Um, again, we're not playing by yeah. the timer. So. so I'm going to... And then you have all of these people are active. Yeah, except these two because they're dead. Okay, so I'm going to move... I'm going to scoot this back. I'm going to move one, two, three, four... If I breach there, would that hurt you at all? No, I'm too far away. Uh, okay. I mean, I can look at the breach chart. We'll destroy a gadget and any walls. Um, I thought there was a... What do you need? Did I just say it? He's going to devise a plan of revenge. Um... I'll try. I'll try to hold down the fort. Just, just me. I'll, I'll just. Uh, I'll just talk to you guys about my life. Um, let's see, Kyle. I'm definitely gonna buy a real copy, but I also want to play this like now. I wonder if anyone will make it on Tabletop Simulator. I agree with you. Uh, it's definitely as soon as I knew that Board Game Co. had the prototype, I reached out to Mythic and said, "Can he pass it on?" Um, I wanted to play this desperately. Um, uh, it, it definitely mashes, like mixes two of my you know favorite things, board games and this tactical shooter. So uh, I, I'm 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 with you on the level of excitement that you're feeling. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I've moved four. So y you wouldn't necessarily. I'd probably save a breach charge because yeah. it's not going to damage anything. If you wanted to do something there, you could just destroy it. Okay, so I'm going to destroy. I'm going to. You about to move in and shoot? I'm gonna lean and shoot. <laughs> Ooh, can you lean? I don't know if you can lean. Can you lean into a window? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you lean into a window? I've, I've got a window that's, right that's, there. That's interesting to me. Well, because I, I, I guess I, I guess I'm thinking like you usually m lean from behind cover, but you're like moving from out like no cover into it. It's I mean it's entirely possible. I just I, I don't know about it at all. Where would leaning be? Uh, line of sight, maybe. Um. And using a gadget would be so a frag grenade would not be as. Keep in mind that if you lean in, you can shoot back at. Me. You won't have any movement left because that's right. one, two, three, four. Lean five. Yeah. Ooh, wait, leaning. Uh, Okay, so you cannot lean through a breach, which makes me think you also cannot lean through a window. Yeah, and it would be, that's what Steven mentioned, it's, it'd be two moves, because it's two moves to cross a... Yeah, yeah, you're right, a, yeah, yeah, because so it's I'm two gonna, moves to cross in. So I'm going to come back here. Oops, knock that over. You're fine. Okay. Boop. Was that here? Uh, yeah, I think it was there, yeah. Okay. Gosh, I don't know what to do. I feel so... <laughs> okay. So you have Overwatch, so as soon as I reveal myself, you're going to be able to shoot at me. I mean, theoretically... Could I throw a grenade in there? If you move to here, I don't have a line of sight to that corner spot. I, I, I don't know what your plan is, but I don't have line of sight exactly to that corner spot because of the uh, wall in the way. Grenade is up to five five away. Uh, the range of a grenade is five spaces? Yes. Could I step over here, throw a grenade in there, and move back, or would you be able to react? After your grenade throw, I'd be able to shoot. Okay. Okay, I just need to get in here. I'm going to come in one, on two, disable that. So that's four movements. If you don't want to be in that corner, you can shoot cameras from a distance. Yeah, I do, I do want to be in the corner. Totally makes sense. Um, 
And then, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do with that. Um, man, with Ash, I'm just gonna, one, two, three, four, five. And then run one, two, three, four, five, or four, five. Okay, and then, then sledge, same, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll run two. Okay. And then I'm gonna set up Overwatch that and then because I, I moved and I destroyed that I'm gonna go ahead and set up overwatch that way too okay okay and that you I used all three of my people there mm. and he said lean and throw the grenade would provide cover but I would still you would he, still he, be able I would to still get a return fire. shot yeah which if I had a really good shot could threaten to kill yeah. you yeah okay so um, that's my, I used all three of my people this round. So okay, it's all you now. Okay, so in your, oh, and so that means that in your, um, I wonder, if, I guess that will mean you don't get a second activation? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know oh. if that's attack smart <laughs> or not, but that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, so that camera's on that side. Um, choices, choices, choices. Castle is hurt. That is a thing. Um, I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to possibly... Risk things. Oh, this drone is back to you. Oh, yeah. Um, Castle is going to move one, two, three, four, five to this spot. He's going to lose his overwatch. And then I am going to uh, throw an impact grenade. I've got one of them. What does that do? Well, an impact grenade has a orange destructive level. Um, where are the... Like gadgets. They over here. It does not inflict any hits, but it does destroy a gadget and any partitions with a orange or yellow strength rating. So it's not going to hurt you, but it is going to destroy this door, which, if I looked correctly, is going to give line of sight, which, yes, is not broken by either of those corners. Barely, but yeah. Barely. <laughs> Barely, but yeah. So you're going to shoot me. You will then be able to ripost okay. um, because you have that ability. So at a range of... That's three, actually. Um, and you don't... You do have some light cover or some cover there. Uh, do you... I, I, I don't think you do. No, there's you have a straight line of sight. Yeah, and it's possible that I'm mistaken or misremembering cover. It's possible that he, because he's tucked up against it, that he does have cover. But I do think that uh, it's if line of sight has to pass through it. Yeah. Um, so since I have uninterrupted line of sight uh, over without any cover in the way, I do believe that it does get to double that. check that from the middle to the middle because that's what it is—is is to the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uninterrupted cover, so I'm not. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, but you don't have uninterrupted cover to mute, so you currently don't know if that's the real one or not. Um, because that's just the straight diagonals. Yeah. So, uh, Castle has moved. He's thrown an impact grenade, and now... Uh, ooh. Does, your, does the space that you're on count as a range... Or is it the spaces in between? It's the spaces in between. So that's three away. Okay. So I'm going to get two orange and two red. So my hope is to have a devastating shot to where you don't get to shoot back. So I don't. if you kill me right off the bat, I don't get You to don't shoot. get a repost because it's like I, I got first shot or drew first blood. So that was seven. 
Um, also, this guy can go away because smoke has been revealed. So that's Boop. seven. So that's threat. So he's five. Okay, so he's fully dead from everything you can tell because you don't have any cover. No. Yeah. So thermite is gone. Thankfully, I have my two best people over here, <laughs> both wounded. Um, so that's the cool way that you can kind of create tactical openings for yourself. Um, I didn't want to get too close. Um, Castle was already injured. If I moved and then destroyed, I would be right up in his face. I wanted to be able to also show you guys the impact grenades. Nitro cells are also really cool, but uh, it wouldn't have done as much damage as me shooting. So that was all three of Castle's actions. He's done. And then... Um, I'm going to go ahead and move uh, smoke. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, then put Overwatch here and get rid of his leaning. Um, and that's going to be smoke. And I think I'm going to be done with my uh, first activation phase. Can I. Where is the Overwatch? Thing. I just, for peace of mind, want to confirm that we're not just shooting at the same time. Oh, for Ripost? Yeah. It's it's in here. That's just the mission book, at, okay. for, for the most part. The, the, the aid is the, the biggest Just to part. confirm that I didn't get off shots as I was, <laughs> as I was dying. Do, do, do. So, uh, whenever an opposing operator has completed an action... Oh, so I when I threw the grenade... Yeah. That would have completed an action. So you would have gotten a shot off. So you would have gotten... Um, thermite would, at range 3, get one of each. So Castle has two hits. So if you do uh, three damage, he's dead. And that wouldn't have happened. Which you definitely did. There we go. So you ripost. So actually... In a turn of thermite, events... Thermite is back. Thermite has, <laughs> has recovered fully from... From death. Yes. <laughs> He's recovered from death. So... This is why you read the rules. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I stupidly threw a uh, impact grenade that just told Thermite, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Please shoot me. Um, so probably not the best tactical move on my part, which does actually change things. Um, because I might now, uh, I, I did get to see you though. But if I didn't have Overwatch there. If you didn't have Overwatch, you would have been dead. Yeah. Uh. Now does that, that stays on. That stays on for the round. And so part of the reason why I was also doing that. saw me died. Yes. Okay. Because it's essentially like the team all has tactical <laughs> knowledge all together. Okay. So instead of him doing that, he's actually going to move, um, here. Uh, and um, he moved, and then before for his second action, uh, who's that? Smoke is going to have a shot at medium distance, um, and I'm shooting through a barricade, so I won't get that uh, lightning bolt one. I'll just get an orange and two reds. Okay, I'm still gonna try and kill you. But uh, I also get to shoot. No, I don't think I don't you, have because you don't sight. have line of sight on me. I'm only able to see you because uh, I had line of sight on okay. you. Okay. So that's six. Minus two. Minus two. So four. Four. Okay. So I still have one. I'm still. You're still. You're still alive. You're still alive. Still hanging on. So that's thermite. And then he is going to. With his last... Well, should he just shoot again? I don't see any reason why not to I just shoot I don't think he again. should. <laughs> I think he's going to. Can you shoot uh, twice? I think so. so okay, we have established you can do the same action twice. Uh, canonically for us. Possibly not but with it, the rules. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Let's, let's confirm that. Yeah. Shoot action... So that would just be in the action. I keep looking at this book thinking there's going to be something helpful in it. Because you can't move twice. Um, well, running is technically more moving, but yes. True. 
But that's a separate action. True. We haven't actually done a full shoot twice on anybody, have we? No. So this would be the first time. That makes me feel better that yeah. if we have if this is invalid that we've only done it. Um, Board game co played can't receive repeat an action in the same characters in a round. Okay. That is probably valid. That is probably valid. Where's just the thing where it talks about them Yeah, doing that's what I was actions? looking at. What's the, just the first? Do, do, do. You guys, this is the hostage stuff. Cannot choose to perform the same action twice. All right. Perfect. So we haven't cheated on that yet. Okay. I think the only thing I did, I destroyed two things once. That's the only other time. And that was the it. question that I, I think it was Steven. Yeah. Uh, so what I'll do instead is what I was going to do kind of all along, which is just get over overwatch through that wall or towards that wall. Good. Um, and then that's going to be just those two. And I'm just going to do it. Just want to use those two. Um, Hmm. I don't have another... I think actually I'm going to move, destroy, that was move two, move two, and then uh, do Overwatch. And I think I'm... So I'm going to have also activated Pulse. And then you're up. And you've activated everybody. Yes. Which means it would go back to me. So then switch to that, and it goes back to me. And then I will activate Mute. Uh... So, what do I want to do with mute? Um, Necessarily love that. Uh, now that he's out there, I think I'm actually just going to move mute. Actually, no, I think I'm going to get other mute to safety. I think I'm going to go one, two to mantle over, three into this corner, and then go Overwatch right there to protect that guy. All right. So we have ended the round. This is going to go away. Um, you have lost nobody else yet. Correct. And I have lost somebody else because Castle was not smart about it. Um, and then I've got less time now because I've lost somebody, and we're on to our next turn. So we're going to start round three, and you're up. Okay. So I'm going to destroy... Can you, you can destroy those? This? No, this wall with the, where is that? Uh, so yes, that is a reinforced wall, which you could use a breach charge to destroy. So okay. if you wanted to move in here and then move into this room, yeah, you so can. Yeah, so I had to do that. Move Overwatch. One. Two. So that'd be. One. Oh, sorry. It's actually one, two to get in. So yeah. then it's like, it's like you're at four, I think now. I think uh, when you go through it, when you go through a breach or something, I think you have to physically go now, straight if I stop, through. is this camera going to... If I stop to breach that wall, what is that target operator and or gadget located in an orthogonally adjacent space behind it? So you could just straight up use your breaching hammer to destroy that camera. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Or you could use a regular destroy action well, and destroy. then use your breaching... Oh, your breaching hammer is not strong enough to yeah. destroy that. And I destroyed that. I used the destroy. Oh, so, so you used a regular destroy action to get, and then got yes. in, and then used your breaching hammer yeah. to bash the crap out of yeah. the... So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go one. Who is... This, this is, is Ash. Ash. Okay, I'm going to go one, two, three. And confirm that I will have... Uh... 
I think it's crossing into uh, that side just barely. Can I step into there? Um, if I breach that? Yeah. Yep. Though, that looks. I, I think it's maybe down. That's downstairs. Oh, crap. Um, boo. Let's see. Can two people occupy the same space? Uh, you can move through your fellow operator, but you can't end your turn there. Okay. Uh, okay, those are... That would have been a really cool, yeah, like, massive shot. Yeah, I really, shot. I really, <laughs> really wanted that. <laughs> I really do think Alex has had that laser tool. I think yeah. that would be a super... Maybe that'll be a stretch goal. Maybe there'll be a stretch goal for Mythic yeah. Games is that they'll give everybody the little laser line so you can uh, do that more easily than uh, that's, a little uh, bit more cumbersome. That's awesome. Darn it. That would have been a huge angle. Because Ash is really good at range. Yeah. She's got orange and red dye. But I'd have to come around all the way. Um, to here? Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. I already kind of know where you are. I've only got one more activation. Oh, wait, no. No, we're, 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 we're started. So it, it depends how much damage you think I could do to you. Because theoretically, you could leave the camera there. And mm -hmm. you could breach that. Yeah. Which would allow to her to move in and then run and then shoot. Okay, I'll do that. So... That's, so I'm going to leave the camera there. Which would mark him. This is still. So and then, then you would have. Are you? Oh, you would have to use a breach charge on that instead of your hammer. So just you would activate a breach charge. Yeah. Okay. So the breach charge goes away. This is now a breach. So this is the first time we'll actually be able to show this to you guys. You kind of have a little token or standee that allows you to signify that a wall has been breached, whether it's a small wall or a larger wall. And so that's going to go here, which means that this is uh, destroyed. They announced today no stretch goals, only daily announcements over the course of the 10-day campaign. So Oh, it's uh, only a 10-day campaign. So we'll be yeah. add, they will be adding stuff to the campaign. It just won't be stretch goal related. Okay, so that's that one, makes sense. two, three, four, five. And then you can run for five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I think that has a line of sight. We'll just check for kicks and giggles. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that. And I cannot riposte yeah. you because you're. I'm facing the other way. So you're going to get an uninterrupted orange and red die. Okay. Come on. If you get a full five Who's on that? this, that's, that's going to be brutal. Smoke. That's smoke. Whew, four. Four. Dear goodness. Um. So smoke just gets hammered. Okay, and that's four, four. That was one, two, three. You did a full five four, and a full five. Five. One, two, th three. Three. Four, four five. five. Okay. So you, you, you have fully okay. exhausted Ash. Are you going to do anything with Thermite? And also, she ended a movement in there, right? Or, yeah, because you destroyed that. She ended something here. You were at. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So she would have been seen by that camera. Is that camera seeing into that other room? Uh, because of the breach, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can look at camera rules. It's a meaty rule book. It's a crunchy, crunchy rule book. So is when there? Does oh, wait, you've also targeted. You've also shot him, so he's now visible to you. Okay. So you could actually, if you want to activate yeah, that, I'm going to activate thermite. Um, uh, so it will reduce it by two, but thermite is pretty should be pretty good at long that's range. One, two, three is four. So he's going to get one, two, three, four. So he's going to get two red and orange. Oh, and that's yeah. So he's going to get he doesn't get the yellow because it's through it through. A, uh, surface, but, I'm, but you're going to get two much guaranteed You're kill. almost guaranteed to kill. You only need one hit. Um, it's just if you roll three that I'll survive. Okay, so I rolled five. So you guys just pinpoint like pincer fired on smoke and absolutely obliterated him. Which 
still, and Thermite was going to die no matter what at the end. Most likely, I, he's he's got. I will kill heads. him. <laughs> I will. I will try to kill him. Okay, so. Um, so that was one. We're gonna go. All right. Do two. I'm going to lean. Have we established that you can't do it through the doorway? No, he just said not through a window. I don't know if we established you can't do it through the doorway. I mean, it's, it's, it's entire, yeah, I, I think you can lean yeah, through the doorway. That's, I, it, even if you can't, as aesthetically for right now, yeah. let's just say that you can. Okay, so I'm going to lean in, and now I have line of sight. And so... So now I find out if that's mute or not mute. Boop! Oh. Not mute. Okay. So that was one, one movement, two to lean. I'll do three, four. Do I only? I only have two operators left. And then oh. I'm gonna set up Overwatch right there. I started off so well. Yeah, I started off horribly. <laughs> I started off so poorly. Okay. So I agree, now, Kyle. I think that I mean you can do it in the video game, so that's yeah. why I'm kind of just saying I don't really care if what you can't say lean, right now. If you can't <laughs> lean past a door jam, then what's the point of leaning? Uh, what would have been great is <sighs> is if that was thermite and I had blown you up with a grenade before you could shoot me back. That's what would have been <laughs> that great. Or if that was well, a grenade only does yellow damage, so that it would have <laughs> injured me. But uh, those do a average of one, so uh, okay. I would have I likely killed you. Had that really been yeah, it, it, he, so it probably would have been advantageous to me that that was yes. me, but but um, I guess I would have had one chance to shoot before you shoot back if that had been so. Here's real. the problem: you are now in a room with a bomb, <laughs> and I am not there. So I am going to. Oh wait. So you moved. I moved. Leaned. Two. Saw that it wasn't me. So you could have actually one, moved two. and activated the bomb if you wanted to. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I, <laughs> I you want to do the purpose of the I game? I forgot about the bomb. <laughs> so that's one, two, I three. Could, I forgot about the objective as well. Three, four. Now what do I do with the bomb? Um. So uh, you've moved and you will activate it. Um. And then... Uh, or deactivate it. Or yeah, you you are starting to disarm the bomb. Okay. And now. Now, how do I continue to disarm the bomb? All it needs is that it needs to last until the end of the fourth round. So the it needs to last to the end of the next round before you get someone over there. Yeah, if that is still actively being disarmed by the end of the next round, you win. By any of my people. Uh, you don't have to sit next to it. Like, you've already started the deactivation process, okay. or the disarming process. But if you get over there and do it, I can take someone back and restart it. That is something that we might need to look up. It, when I was reading the rules, how tall are I'm you? I'm six foot three. <laughs> uh, this is funny, because the first time when I met Alex, uh, the first thing he said to me, picking me up from the airport, was, Oh, you don't look as t I'm glad you're not as tall as I thought you might be. <laughs> so... He, he, I think he has a little thing on height. Um, we were discussing how incredibly tall Tom Vassell is, which I didn't know until I, saw, I looked up pictures. Yeah, he doesn't. That. He doesn't appear. He doesn't appear sitting like down behind huge. a desk to be really tall. But I've heard that, that he's, 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 he's very so tall. tall. When you look up pictures of him at a convention, yeah. yes, he can rearm it. Is is what Alex was saying. So thank you. Now that you're done watching Loki, I appreciate that you're able to, <laughs> but to if you, help us with the rules. So if you rearm it, then it's another. I think okay, so I don't lose by re by it being rearmed. So if I deactivate your disarming of it, it will go back to this. It just continues, and then you can it. rearm it. But now the other bomb is gone. Oh yes. Yeah. So so th this is the main bomb. This one's off the board now. Okay. And uh, you moved, activated. I think you get one more if you want to do Overwatch somewhere. I think you have another action. Yeah. Because you uh, you moved, leaned, moved. Armed, so I think you have another action. Only here for ten minutes or so. It's okay, Alex. We want you here for as long as you can be. How fast can he run? Not fast. Not very fast. 
Um, He's got a movement of two. Yeah, all set up Overwatch. This way. So if I do it like that, I have 180 degrees. Uh, So you can't do it diagonally. Uh, It would just be like that. Which would give you that way. But not if you come in from this room and... Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Devin, this is Allison. Allison, this is Devin. Nice to meet you. Hi. Allison's this back. This looks intense. It is. Yes. It, it's turned. It's It has I turned. Was I, was, doing I was doing exceptionally well, and then I've, I've kind of uh I ran in and shot in a point game. blank and missed, like, my first move of the game. You didn't miss. You just hit all well, non-vital organs. Yeah. So. Oh, my gosh. This looks way fun. Um, okay. You guys have fun. See? What did I say? <laughs> what did, what did At the say? beginning, you had no interest in it, but once you saw it and played well, it, you know I would beat you on this. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you know I would. I and mean, there's just no. He did. He did offer that up of his own volition. He said she would beat me if we played. Oh, it. oh, definitely. So okay. So yeah, I'll put Overwatch. That once way. it's disarmed, at the end of the round, you move to overtime, regardless of what round you're in. From here, the state of the bomb at the end of the round determines the winner. Okay. So at the end of this round, even if I disarm it, it will go to the overtime round and skip round four and five, and we'll push to the overtime round, at which point you have a chance to re, uh, re-disarm, re-disarm, re-disarm it. Okay. okay, so you have gone with all of your people. Yes. I only have two people left, which is a terrifying number. Um, I am going... You don't have Overwatch at all. I'm going to move, which is going to take away Overwatch. I'm going to... He was here, right? Yes. One, two, three. Destroy. Four... Um, if I move there, I'm actually going to move, golly, I'm just busting everything. I'm going to move here, which does not give you line of sight. And then, um, with my final action, I'm going to toss a nitro cell into this space here, um, which means you are adjacent to it. doesn't give me line of sight. And I know it doesn't, but I'm going to do that. (laughs) I know it doesn't. I think it hits that corner. No, it doesn't. I have line of sight there. Look at the camera. Well, you can't tell with your head there. No, so f- when you go from the center of the no, space... No, I'm going from the center of the space. <laughs> no. I, I'm going to move these two people, move my overwatch. And just place see. it on the ground? So see, from the center of that to the center of that, you have the edge. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm on the camera, it looked... Which is specifically why I moved it. Yeah, I know, but it's still... You're, Okay, so I have that and my Overwatch. I don't think your Overwatch is going to be too necessary. Um, uh, I'm going to throw a C4 or Nitro Cell to this spot. Um, so which what is that going to do? It should, because it's not the immediate spot that you're on, it should do one orange damage, which hopefully is enough to kill your guy. And I do not believe that... Uh, Each affected space requires a separate dice roll. So I will do a single orange die roll to see if I can kill the guy that's in there. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use a re-roll. I'm gonna use Wait, the, there's re-rolls? Yes, there's re-rolls. For you or for everybody? For both of us. Well, that would have been real good to know at the beginning when... I did mention it, but it was like... 30 minutes prior before we started, so it was probably overwritten. Would have been good etiquette to be like, hey, that was a sucky roll. <laughs> to be honest, I you completely have forgot token. about them until I had a sucky roll. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You're going to roll another blank just because karma is on my side. <laughs> to be fair, I forgot to re-mention them until we got to the point where I had such a horrible roll to pivotal move. Okay. Do you want me to not? No, you can. <laughs> We're gonna. There is gonna be an asterisk by the game. Yes. Okay. It's okay. You're gonna roll a zero. Oh man! (laughs) I thought I could will it into being. So that that affects. Yeah, a single re-roll per person for the game. Again, great information (laughs) to know prior. I mean, we were deep into me setting up when we talked about this, so it's entirely possible that we also had children trying to show us Legos and Minecraft. So. Okay. They were adorable children. Yes. And, you know, I mean, the Minecraft and okay, Legos. Okay, so Thermite's and... dead because of a re-roll token. 
There's the asterisk. Oh, but um, okay, so he's dead. But that is Pulse's final. Um, that's Pulse's final action. So he is exhausted for this round. And then so I am the, going to... The rules say you get pinged the moment you enter a room with a camera. Does that go for entering a room with a smoke deployed on the entryway? Smoke. What's a smoke? Like a smoke grenade, I guess. Uh, so the only things that can f- see you and ping you are... Uh, d- deploy... Or, or, bulletproof cameras cameras that are like set up cameras within the environment already like the the ones that are on the walls and then people Uh, no other gadget oh and also the drone from the attacker's point of view no other particular gadget just knows where people are um, unless you know we're talking about gadgets that will exist for other um, operators that we don't have here hopefully that answers the question Kyle so he's done. Um, I need to do something with mute. Ash is close to dead. She's hurt. Um, well, halfway. <laughs> I'm going to move. What is mute's mute's long range is not great. I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe this was the exact spot that. Um, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Um, well, it's just seven plus, so why don't I actually just move there and not exhaust a run? So, um, because that should have the same level of uninterrupted sight. Make sure you're not catching the corner. Okay. So it should have uninterrupted to center. Here, move to your center. head back so we can check the, uh, and you know, the little dots are really important. Yeah. Yeah, barely. Barely. Okay. So, um, if that is the case, um, that's mute is seven plus. He gets two oranges. Yeah, that's over there. Yes, but will those cameras see me through smoke? I do believe that the cameras will see you through smoke. So if you throw a smoke grenade in, I don't think it affects the camera. I think it specifically actually mentions that in the rules. Um, I don't know if you want to look at it, but uh, uh, I don't believe smoke grenade will stop cameras uh, from operating normally. Would that be under cameras or under... I think if you go to gadgets at the back and see smoke grenade, I think it might uh, say it. If not, it would be under cameras. So, two orange... For this uh, long distance, I guess, shotgun sh- uh, at Ash. Four. So I think Ash is dead. Dead. And then... Um, I'm going to place an Overwatch token here to... Protect myself in case Sledge comes through that same... Oh, ooh, actually, no. I need to get to the bomb. So, I'm going to run, which with Mute can happen too. And that's going to fully activate Mute. And so, neither of us are able to use the second activation rounds. Right. Um, so, you smoke grenade... So you're, I'm down to two, and you're down to one, and we are in overtime now, based off of yeah, what. Alex except was for saying. lines of sight to always visible gadgets or located operators, so that it does. Uh, it until the end of the round, the space is occupied by the overlay block, the smoke overlay block line of sight for both squads. Except to except for lines of sight gadgets. to always visible gadgets or located. Okay. Gadgets, so. All right, so then um, it goes immediately into overtime because you've set that bomb up. So then now you're up. You've got one person there, and I've got my two people here, and it's it's your go. You've got to go protect that bomb or kill both of my people. 
Um, and I've got to go disarm that bomb. Well, how am I going to do that? I don't know if it's going to be possible for you. Um, this is a soft wall, so you could, I mean, you could use like your, does the breaching hammer, the cool thing about the breaching hammer is you get to bust something and shoot, um, but that's not in this well, particular gonna, moment great. I'm going to go ahead and use a breaching charge to breach that, so okay. I can go through here, so that's. I think that the breach charge destroys the next thing. It's possible that it doesn't, but um, we'll just say that it yeah. does at this point in the game. It doesn't really bother okay, me. Okay, so that's one. Oh, and then these would have gone away. Right. So that's one. We're going diagonal, then that's, I don't think I can go diagonal through all. So one, two, three, four. But that I'm getting there doesn't do anything for me. No. Uh, well, if, if I was one closer, you would have been able to do your bear, your breach hammer, which would have busted that and allowed you to shoot in. Um, but but I've already used an action. Here. You've already destroyed and moved, so if you did that, it wouldn't really help. Uh, you're in a hard spot. I don't know if you're going to be able to get out of it. No, if I just... Stand right. Okay, so I would need to. I need to get into that room. You would need essentially. You would have needed I two need more actions action. to breach and then Overwatch. Yeah. If I can, one, two. Yeah, I can't get into that room. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can. I'm just one person short. So I'll go ahead and breach that. And we can put a breach on that wall. Okay. So just for the aesthetics of it. <laughs> just just for then, the narrative. And then one move in. Did you have one left? Yeah. Okay, well you wouldn't have been able to move because you would have two to push in. Like it takes two to go in through a oh, okay. breach. I mean, thematically, though, it's cool that you just busted down yeah. the wall. Okay, so... I think that's all I can do. So, it is now going to be my activation. I think I'm going to move in here. And I can't just... And I can see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I just want, so we're in the overtime. Yeah, we're in overtime. <laughs> so, it's kind of like you gave yourself a front row seat to right. me disarming, and then I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> that thing, I think that just makes sense. Uh, now, who is that that's... Pulse? Pulse? Yeah. So he gets one yellow and two red at... at uh, well, actually, he's but, at close distance, so he gets... One and two orange. What's your question? Oh no, uh, I'm just going back to the reroll token. <laughs> the guy who used yes, the, the... yes. Had I had I known <laughs> that I had a reroll, you, your reroll, if you had done it, would have probably been over here, and it would have that would have been Castle, who was the guy who killed himself by throwing an impact grenade. Yeah, except I would have had a whole other person yeah, over yeah. here. If if you had done well, but um, uh, that. I, I guess, yeah, I mean, you could have possibly killed him outright right. if you had had a good enough uh, roll on that. Well, here, here. Let's, let's before I do this, let's just see... See what, what it would have done. If you would have hit five. I would have hit six. <laughs> so. so. So we can know that it's possible that, Okay, that so this we're game going back been... to right now. <laughs> we're going to reset. Reset the we whole were. thing. Um... Two damage, which is not enough to actually not enough kill, to kill you. me. Um, Doesn't matter because this ends. And then this guy's gonna go one, two, three, four, and uh, shoot at you at a range of three. And so he's gonna get one plus two of these, um, and he will have fully activated. And and now I just die in a blaze of glory. It's like platoon, yeah. just. 
<laughs> getting getting nailed backwards. So, so then that would have been the end of Sledge. Uh, but I mean, you know, obviously we made a mistake with forgetting about the reroll dice, right. which which could have theoretically changed your push on that end of the map. Um, but even when you did, even when you faltered at the beginning and had what seemed to be a dis- like a disastrous right. start in terms of numbers, you you swung it back, yeah. and um, if, after for a while you had a three two advantage. Um, so I think that was interesting that uh, you're able to uh, c- kind of change the possibilities of of the game. Yeah, and, and, and it definitely. You, you're not out. It definitely has has the tactical ability to and to come back. It's it's not a again that you have the dice. I think like yeah, I, I was expecting to just be demolished after that first. Yeah. Now I didn't really know what I was doing as you had to tell me, hey, there's a bomb there, you can disarm that <laughs> if you want. But does it maybe that makes up for the for no, the it re-roll? Doesn't. No. <laughs> it doesn't, but because then that put me in line of sight to you. That's why you killed me. Yeah. Is because you could see me because I disarmed the bomb that turn. So. Yeah. So, as like you said, you didn't get a ton of time with this until I got here. What like what do you think of it? First impressions. No, oh, I think just, it's fantastic. I think it does a really good job of capturing that that tactical shooter. Um, again, the. Like Steve, Steven said the same thing. He said that if you had, if you hadn't have actually started the bomb, right. you would have probably been in a better tactical position. Yeah, but live and learn. So, <laughs> or, or, or have, die, or have or me explain right. the rules better. Yeah. <laughs> you could have me explain the rules. Better. Uh, but to, yeah, to be I, fair, I, I spent like three hours today pouring through that and watching uh, Quackalobas and Board Game Co.'s uh, gameplay to try and get it but it's still it's it's a lot to process at first yeah, and I, it definitely does a good job of having all of the just tactical decisions like it's there's so many options of things you can do um you know i think it's one of those games that really the more you play it the more i think this would be it's going to get more fun for two people to play together again that continue again. To, to play it. To, and to me, it's like a tactical... So your son said it looks like tactical chess. It looks like chess with guns. Yes, chess, chess with guns, which I thought was a really interesting thing. But the other thing that it reminds me of is almost the iterative reward of like Magic the Gathering. You know, like a two-player head-to-head game where the more you know it, the better you get at manipulating it. Yeah. And I think that's that's really interesting. And I think two people playing together that start to learn each other, just like an actual video game. The yeah. more you play with someone, the more you learn their... Okay, you start playing against not just... Your mind games You're evolve. not playing against the pieces on the board. You're actually playing against the other person. I yeah. think that's a really... I think that's that's a really unique opportunity with a game like this where you're actually... It, it's completely different to me in terms of mechanics and how it functions, but in the experience that it gives me and how I'm engaging with the IP, I'm actually reminded of Star Wars Rebellion, which is that massive two-player fantasy flight game where you have two players that have asymmetric roles, not attack and defense, yeah, but see, rebel versus empire. All I know about that is all the reasons Derek said not to play. That's, <laughs> that's, but it's it's interesting because it uses the IP to create a very interesting yeah. and rewarding two-player experience where, like you said, the more you play it, it's less about what's on the board and more about the person opposite the yeah. table from you. And so this actually... I was wor- I was cu- not worried, but I was curious because I love the video game so much. How it would make me feel about playing this board game adaptation? And Stephen was saying that it'd be interesting to get a two v two player game. I don't actually know though. I I, I don't know mechanically, yeah. rules wise, how it would adjust to have more. Than- but I think this would just be a two player game to me. Yeah, like, and I it think says it- two to four, but again, you'd have it just be. It seems like the unless there's something in the rules on a different four player setup. Yeah, it'd be just collaborating kind of that yeah four players but it's really just two brains working the same stuff yes yes uh, and and rebellion does the same thing they're like you can play 2v2 and it's like one person controls the ground or yeah. one person control but it's really just it's you're better just, when you're you, all talking together yeah 
I could definitely see this being like an ongoing, like twice a month kind of scheduled, not tournament, but just like like best like best of eleven. Yeah, but games but just having league. having an ongoing like come back to it because it's a it's not like it you're not going to get the same setup, especially once you learn it and you start doing your own setups. It's going to be a completely different experience every time and really has that kind of tit for tat feeling yeah. of a, again, of a video game kind of where you get together and you play online with your friends and you just keep that running tally. Of, yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely think this has the opportunity to be that, like we just set it up on Sunday night and we play and that's just, we're six to seven kind of thing. Like it's, yeah. And in the video game, you play rounds as a, as like a, a particular people, like the defenders or the attackers. Um, so I think that playing frequently like that, playing more than once and having kind of like a tournament play would be interesting. Like if you have one person play five times in a row as the defenders, yeah. one person play five times in a row as attackers, and then you switch yeah. and kind of have... See, see which role you're better at. See, and also, to me, this excites me even with the reduced amount of operators. It, there's only six here, and you get to pick five of them. But in the main game, you know, they're, they're, I think the base they're at least going to have ten of each because they show that in the rule book and they mention that. But I imagine on the Kickstarter they were going to reveal even more operators because in the video game now there's like a thirty or tw- there's like twenty five or so on yeah. each side, and it's just an insane amount. But that gives you so much more replayability because you're like, oh, this makeup of operators is completely different. Yeah, yeah, that's again, I, uh, we've just scratched the surface. Like I, I wasn't tactically thinking about who I had and what they could do. Yeah, just because I was still trying to grasp the gameplay. Once you get to where you are selecting a team. And doing that deployment stage yeah. on your own in the beginning. Yeah, and then, again, you get into the hostage, things like that, the other gameplay options. They share the decision of one guy and each control two. Yeah, so that, to me, does the same thing that Rebellion does, where it kind of fractures the but cohesiveness you, but if of you're you deciding the to, whole team. But if you're allowed to talk to each other, you're just going to... Unless it's a... You, you're not allowed to talk or communicate, like, no, which would be... Weird. Although yeah, I, no, guess I, I, I imagine there is some level of table talk. Thematically, I guess you, they you, have, you don't they necessarily have, get a fair amount radios. of communication. Yeah, so it, it's interesting, which kind of brings in in the video game. You can play with a mic, uh, which is amazing if you're someone who actually does do that. But you can also play with not without ever talking to your teammates. So it'd be yeah. interesting what the rule set is for those people. But uh, to me, in like Rebellion, I don't know if it's because I'm like a selfish competitive player, but when I'm playing at something like this, I want control of Yeah, the and team. you want to, you're doing stuff over here, planning on your guys over there coming in. And then they're like, no, I'm going to go over again, here. It's, it's <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. It's yeah, that. So, so uh, Kyle said he talked to one of the devs and he said, if things go well, there will be expansions for both the I don't, map expansions would be. Awesome. So that's like just yeah. give me a whole box that's just boards. Like yeah, just, because in the in the in the main game that you get, you'll have this consulate map, and then you'll have another one on the opposite side. This prototype only has the consulate yeah. on it. So the main game would give you the second map. But once you add more maps and more operators, yeah. that replayability starts to expand. Just like not exponentially, but to a high degree. Yeah. And that's why I love the video game. Um, I think it gives you so much to play with. And I think that this has the opportunity, if it gets enough backing from both the board game community and overlap from the video game community of fans of Ubisoft and of Rainbow Six Siege, I think we could see a lot of content for this that really makes it exciting. Yeah, and that's where this gets so just diverse and replayable is when you start having... Even three or four maps to choose, even two maps would be, but you get into three or four maps and even that seems like it has a lot more potential than even more operators. Just having having more maps and and different setups so that it's not, you're not just constantly kind of memorizing how to breach and how to go in through it. Yeah, and Kyle suggested a random um, deployment and map setup uh, if, you had, yeah. if you had an app. The, the app already exists, so having... 
um, something that's able to do that yeah. uh, w- would be cool as a randomizer. It would also be, I mean, a randomizer works not only to challenge people, but also as a way if you have a if you have a group that just takes too much time deciding stuff, that could kind of right. quickly set something up for you. Or if you're doing a tournament and you yeah. don't want any bias in it, and you I don't know, and I don't know that in a like, I like the idea of being able to pick through, but that for for me, I don't. Again, in in the video game, I was never a let me just. So, like spend a lot of time said I just I took the kits that were available yeah I didn't do a lot of customization so taking out the setup stage and just having an app do that for me doesn't bother me at all yeah, um, yeah. now the more I get comfortable with it I may want to do that but I like the idea of having yeah. a like here's how you set it up and I'm just making the decisions of a randomly generated scenario. I think you could play numerous times with the pre-made scenarios before you get to the point where you're like, ah, I want to see more of right. what I can do and the, the you know, custom scenarios or uh, traps that I can create and combine. Um, I mean, there, there's operators that I know of, you know, you've got Capcan who can set up uh, EDDs or entry denial devices, which would, um, as soon as you walk through, would create an explosive yeah. and do damage. You have uh, one of the people we didn't use, which is in the box somewhere, is Jaeger, who has an ED or um, an ADS, an active defense system. And so, like, if I if uh, if you had thrown in a grenade, that ADS would have sucked up the grenade and it wouldn't have activated. Mm. So there's a lot of ways that even just adding one or two extra operators could really change how you approach stuff. Yeah. And we also did just the base setup. We didn't pick where these deployment tactical inventory went. Um, I could have created deployable shields, which would have given me like half cover to stand behind. Yeah. I could have had more impact grenades or more nitro cells. And I and assume I could have put a claymore on that. So if you had set the bomb, if you had another action, Thermite could have placed a claymore here facing this way. And if I had moved into the room, I would have taken like two red dice yeah. of damage. And so, um, yeah, th- there are a lot of ways that you could finagle this and customize it yeah. to your particular approach because you know there's some people in the game that love using claymores to set up a defensive position and then there's other people that would prefer flat or stun grenades to toss it in there and you know i mean if you had had a stun grenade with blitz you could have thrown in a stun grenade rushed in shot had right. very little damage come back at you and do it again or if i had re-rolled <laughs> but. i should have used a different example so <laughs> to not highlight the re-roll failure on my part but would claim work work without the breach um, so claymores activate by going up against. Uh, I think they're basically the motion motion sensor, aren't they? Uh, yeah, so it's kind of motion sensor. So they operate like this, um, and so what you're supposed to do is way. is affix them to a hard wall. Um, so if thermite had the ability to move over to this corner, or actually, you know, when he was alive, not doing the bomb, if he had moved into this area. He could have placed the claymore here, which would have blocked off that line. And if I had moved in there, I would have had to take damage. Um, I think that if I, you know, came in from the other side, I could have shot the claymore um, to destroy it. But if I moved in from this side and didn't have any line of sight or anything, I would have activated this and been blown up. Right. So, uh, yeah, no, there's just a even with the prototype, there's just a lot of ways that I think you can explore potential. Um, so. I know that this is like so base level from what they're going to have, but the, it, just the prototype already excites me just yeah. because of not only my, you know, attention or, or love for the game, but also, you know, chess with and it's guns. Just, it's just, <laughs> it's so different. Like it's not... Yes, maybe could have defended the disarm. Now to make it into a drinking game, it would get much less tactical the further you get into the drinking, but I'm totally okay with that. Uh, yeah, but he had not bre- had he not breached as the sensor go through the space he activated the bomb from. Yeah, I'll have to check that. I, I I'll have to look through that and think about that. Uh, my brain is slowly uh, deteriorating. Yeah. But no, yeah, I appreciate uh, you watching, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this was this was a ton of fun. Again, I think this it just it's so different. There, it's not. I mean, it. It's so separate from all of the just standard mechanics that you get in board game. Like it's it's its own. Yeah. So it's not area control. It's not worker play. It's not. It does such a good job of taking the video game theme and putting it on a tabletop. Uh, 
but still keeping that that feeling that I mean it was tense it was it was kind of trying to see where you could lean around and it, I, it, there was a lot of tension playing yeah it's, I mean it's a tabletop miniatures game yeah that or like a war game almost that's compressed into such a small environment yeah. that it, it, it makes it really tense and it makes it, it makes you worry about the life of your person uh, very very Highly, is that what um, it's like to play Warhammer? <laughs> Dude, I we should. I, should, I love War. I, 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 I never I've never played. played the tabletop miniatures, but I collected it as a kid and absolutely adored it. And if I had, you know, two thousand dollars and the time to just sink into it, uh, then I would. I would love to play Warhammer. It's exactly the kind of game I would enjoy. See, I've never played, never seen it played. I've just seen a lot of people on Facebook painting. Well, I mean, w- once once COVID, uh, you know, restrictions and life, we should go to game. Yeah, I know they do a lot because of, they have it there. Yeah, so big, um, I, I'd be happy to go check it out with you yeah. because it, it's something that I'd, I'd love it. Um, uh, Kyle, I do agree with you. I think a smaller map with split levels um, would be more interesting. I will say, knowing the layout of this in the video game, it does confuse me a little bit because technically. The way that like these hatches work um, are actually like this is supposed to be downstairs, not actually upstairs. And if Pulse had stayed down there, I think I could have actually shot through the floor using the cardiac sensor. Mm-hmm. Um, if I was in the same room, that's how that's what this like verticality yeah. symbols mean uh, here. It's just that. Um, it wasn't super clear to me in the rule book, so I didn't want to like yeah. delve into it too much. But yeah, having split levels with different bombs would be really interesting. Um, Something I'd like to say, and it would make sense again thematically that your outside of the building movements aren't limited to your just like if I want to go from here to over there, outside without and. Uh, Windows are closed. There's no opposition to it. That you'd get to rotate faster. That, I, that I'd be able to do that in less than three moves. Yeah. Versus yeah. moving through the... So that that would be the only thing. Yeah, I'm fine with the movement limitations inside. All that makes sense because you're moving around. You're moving tactically, stealthily. But if I want to move around to the other part of the building, I, I, would, I think that would be the only thing that just sticks out. It's kind of if you want to come outside move around the building you should be able to do that faster than than just I mean taking three or four moves to get around because yeah. thematically I would come out and then I would sprint around and that may be all that I do I'm fine if that's a full move but to be able to reposition without without being seen by anybody else because I'm outside yeah yeah so, it's 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 blind to me just like yeah. I'm blind to you interior yeah uh, or in the interior yeah so th- that makes sense um, but otherwise and I, I love it it was a it was a great experience so. yeah no I appreciate you yeah. appreciate you saying yes yeah I appreciate the offer so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's anything else you want to say before we sign off uh, I guess just a reminder that if you're interested I think Steven specified that the campaign was only 10 days. So Mythic Games is going to launch uh, Six Siege, the board game, inspired by the video game, on Kickstarter June 22nd, which is next Tuesday. And I looked for the Kickstarter page. I can't find a link to it. I'm sure it's out there. But once There I is a the... very active Facebook page called yeah, like Six a... Siege, the board game, where they have like daily, multiple daily yeah. updates on it. But uh... So I'll leave a link to that in the description of the video. I, but again, I looked for the Kickstarter link. Once we find that or once that's up, I will post that in the description also. Kyle says it starts at 1 p.m. Eastern time and then Steven agreed about moving outside. That's what the abstract is used for also to get to the opposite side of the map. Yeah, so uh, I I definitely agree with you um, as well. I think that's something that could help balance exterior movement um, for the attacker to help you rotate more more quickly. Um, Is that something in the game or in this? You said that's what the abstract is used for also. To get to the opposite side of the map in a turn. Uh, I mean, all I'm thinking of abstract right now is like math theory proofs, so I don't think that's what he's talking oh, about. The upstairs level. So. Oh, 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 yes, yes. The abstract upstairs yeah. level. So if but he, I have to go inside. You have to, to go that. inside to, to benefit from that. Yeah. Well, actually, I think these outside points do allow you to go upstairs. Okay, so I could have gone you here. You could have gone here and, and gone. Exited there. Um, these are blue. The these are blue. yes. But so. as soon as you would have gone up here, you would have been in the upstairs, 
and then that would have ended your activation, and then you could have come back over there next activation. Okay. So, yes. Um, okay. Probably so also something that I mentioned in three hours ago. And but, I wouldn't uh, have even thought of... Like, I, you mentioned stairs. I never yeah. thought of going in and going upstairs. So that's... Again, there's... It's... It's one of those games, the more you play, the better you're going to get at it Yeah, in a significant way. Mm -hmm. Just because you'll know what your options are. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, hey, thanks for setting yeah. all this up. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the offer and thanks for playing. We're and gonna... Steven and Kyle and everybody who's been kind of watching the whole time. Yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Yep, Kickstarter is linked above in the chat. I'll find that and then... Um, and then we'll, we'll leave a link to that in the description. So if you're looking for that, you can find it. So... Thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been a blast, and I'm going to click over, and we're going to sign off for now. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be live streaming a lot, so <laughs> yeah, keep up with the YouTube.com slash Kidsplaining. Keep up with Devin over on Quackalope. Yeah, I'm the writer yeah. for the website, so if you want to go to the blog, you can go to Quackalope.com slash blog, and that's where all my writing is. So, all right, we'll see you later. Bye. See you guys.